worldwide fans of the planet's hottest entertainment with an edge. I'm In Fuego here once again welcoming you to my namesake program, En Fuego Tainment. That's right, uh, just call me Fuego for short. So stoked to have you here for another Fresca Fuego review. And this one coming a little ahead of time, which is always rad when I get an opportunity to see a film that's not of the scarific variety, like with the horror show where I get official press and stuff. Uh, I got to see an early screening of Knives Out, the new Ryan Johnson film, the Ryan Johnson redemption tour perhaps, after so many people, myself included, were kind of rubbed the wrong way with uh, his take on the Star Wars universe, that galaxy far, far away with The Last Jedi Episode 8. I didn't hate it, like some people, but I most definitely had some legit mixed feelings about some of the choices that he made, uh, the humor, the tone of certain things. It just didn't particularly feel very Star Wars-y to me, but that is another argument for another day because of the fact that Ryan Johnson that really laid the groundwork for an awesome career before that controversial turn, and Looper and especially Brick, the first film of his that I saw, which was like a crime noir kind of thing, both of those films are fantastic, written and directed, and I think also produced by uh, Ryan Johnson in those cases. And so this is him returning to his own original idea with Knives Out, wrote, directed, and produced it, and somehow coerced one of the most just incredible ensembles ever assembled. I mean, it's just, wow. It's one of my favorite films of the year, so I'm just gonna say that right off the bat and say that uh, I always go into a little bit of bueno, malo, and feo here, shebanga, just like you're seeing below, good, bad, and ugly. That is my silly framing trope here on In Fuego Tainment anytime I'm doing a review of a new film. But uh, this movie is so, uh, it is so bueno. It is like beyond bueno is what I will say. It's honestly one of the most entertaining experiences that I have had in a theater in so, so long. So you have a rich, privileged, snooty family that the patriarch of this clan is a very popular and immensely wealthy uh, writer of like crime mystery sort of stuff and the the framing device is essentially that they're all in town the extended family so the children and the grandchildren are all there for his 85th birthday and he apparently commits suicide however there is suspicion of foul play I mean a guy slicing his own throat I mean come on this is definitely a little weird and so of course you have investigators there two of the official variety, and then one who is a PI, who is kind of a famous detective who has been uh, kind of consulted by a mysterious person to aid the police and with his reputation, with the fact that he's broken some big time cases, he's been written about in prestigious magazines for the work that he's done, they decide to have him consult them and boy is he a character, played by Daniel Craig, and Craig is doing kind of a similar draw to what you had in Logan Lucky, uh, the uh, Soderbergh film, if I'm not mistaken, but albeit of uh, the much more intellectually elevated here. And so he is very suspicious of this family and he is quite positive that somebody, you know, whether it's one of the three children or one of their spouses or, you know, even there's a couple grandchildren there too, as I mentioned, there's uh, three of them, as a matter of fact. And so, yeah, you've got, you've got, you know, the, it's, a, it's an interesting dynamic in the fact that the cast is, as I said, ridiculous in this film. You've got Tony Collette as the widow of uh, one of our patriarch sons. You have Michael Shannon as the youngest son who has been running the father's publishing company for the longest time. Uh, his wife, boy, uh, the actress, I want to say, damn, she was on Murphy Brown. I've seen her in many things. Her name eludes me, unfortunately. But then you also have, uh, I believe, the older of the siblings, which is, or maybe the oldest, if I'm not mistaken, played by none other than Jamie Lee Curtis, who it's so awesome to see her having this career resurgence lately between this and Halloween, and obviously they're shooting those two Halloween reboot sequels and stuff, so that's exciting. And her husband is Don Johnson, so I, I mean, and you know, the kids, you've got like their child, the Don Johnson and uh, Jamie Lee Curtis pairing is none other than Chris Evans, so he is the oldest of, uh, of the grandkids, and 
he returns to the kind of snarky shithead role that I mean, he kind of embodied in stuff like Not Another Teen Movie and, uh, you know, the, the way he portrayed Johnny Storm in those two Fantastic Four films, which he was the absolute best part of those. And, I mean, yes, he has gone on to this more stoic and seriousness, you know, playing Captain America, but it's, it, you can tell Chris Evans is having fun with this role, and uh, you've also got uh, the kid who plays Big Bill in uh, La 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 La, it, obviously, you know, the, the last two uh, Mochetti films and stuff, the younger counterpart, obviously, and he is, he is the strangest of the grandchildren, you know, he's kind of, he's got a political fascination, and he's got, he's addicted to his social media, he's always tweeting about crazy social stuff, and yes, the family, like, despite the fact that, yes, father dies, and so the aftermath and the investigation, the interrogation of everybody separately and stuff, it's it's really, really fascinating. Tony Collette is great, you know, as the, as the widow. You know, she was uh, most recently seen and celebrated in Hereditary. Her daughter is a girl that I just could not put my finger on what she's from. She saw it as well. I mean, honestly, there's not a missing link in this cast, and... There's two other characters that play in pretty prominently as well, one being the live-in nurse and the other being, uh, you know, the maid who is there as well. So, and she's not quite a live-in nurse because, yes, now, now that I recall, she does actually, you know, go home to her mother and her sister and stuff. And uh, she is an immigrant uh, of Hispanic uh, descent. And there's, there's all of these conflicting, like, they can never remember where she's from, like, all of them, there's this running joke where all of the stupid kids are just like, oh yeah, she's from Brazil, she's from Paraguay, she's from, you know what, like, they, they can, they just can't get it straight. And, uh, despite the fact that they all mention how great she is and how, you know, she's done so much for the family and how she is family at this point because of the great care for this extended period of time that was given to her, uh, to, uh, excuse me, to, to their father by her. Uh, and her performance is fantastic. I would, it's, she's one of the only actresses' names in this, as I said, that I just, I, I can't recall. Uh, where I've seen her before, she looks super familiar. I know I've seen her in things before, but uh, yeah, that Hispanic actress, she kills it, heh, quote unquote, in, in this. And she is terrific. She is the most genuine person in the film. And, uh, and yet it's, this is one where I can't spoil stuff. And being the fact that I saw, and maybe I'll spoil in the fail, you know, that's, I, I will spoil at the end of this because this is a twisty, turny, very fascinating yet fun film and Ryan Johnson does such a terrific job and yes it's obviously going to be compared to Clue and the amazing ensemble cast that that had but I contend this is so much better it has so much more of a sophistication it is that like it is razor sharp wit it is just filled with laughs and intrigue and you're second guessing things and motivations of certain characters are clear those of others are not and I, I mean, when Ryan Johnson at the beginning of this pre-screening gives a little disclaimer imploring and begging people not to spoil the film, I mean, I'm, I, I'll say some spoilers at the end, but, uh, or, or maybe, I, I don't know, even now as I think about it, I honestly don't know if I should, but, um, well, I, I will proceed and determine here at the end. So, as you can tell, I am gushing about how it's, it's expertly directed, this, uh, this mansion in uh, upstate New York, presumably, uh, that they filmed this at. It's just breathtaking. And the fact that he was able to coerce all of these big stars and say, hey, you guys want to, you know, go out to this mansion for, you know, uh, for a short period of time and we'll all stay there and we'll film this movie and everybody. I, that was, from what I read, part of the reason why he was able to assemble this impressive of, uh, of a group of actors. It, it just is really, really terrific. The score has some operatic aspects to it. It's, uh, I, I mean... Yeah, it, it, it just adds to the theatrical aspect of everything. This is legit one of the best films I've seen, not just this year, but in a number of years. And it's in contention with the biggies for me, like, uh, you know, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and stuff like that. It is over two hours, but yet it doesn't feel like it because it is so tightly paced. And it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's edited well, and the intrigue level just stays very high throughout. And... 
that like you find out early on one aspect, but then and honestly, you think you know what's going on, and that's the that's the beauty of this film is the fact that well, there's certain things you do see coming, there's other things that you don't, and I guess it'll really just depend upon the perceptiveness of the viewer and what they're able to really kind of pick up on. But I still, while there were certain things I I kind of you know guessed and saw coming, and I was just like. I kind of think this is going to happen. Then there were other things where I was like, oh, oh, interesting. I did not expect that. So it's it just has such a fresh feel to it. And yes, I've been gushing for a while, so I have to try to think of Malo. I, I struggle here. It's going to be a grasping at straws sort of situation. I mean, the grandkids are a little underdeveloped aside from Chris Evans. Maybe that's something that I could mention. Um, and the fact that... The, there are certain things that are predictable, but yet I think they were deliberately predictable in the fact that they were to make you kind of think one thing is happening before taking a swerve and you know throwing a curveball at you. So that's that's another thing. Um, I guess it is it is a PG-13 film, and maybe it could have gone a little more grisly, and it could have been the slightest bit more entertaining with an R rating, but. Once again, some of the best films don't need it. It doesn't need to, this is a movie that doesn't need to be gory. You know, it doesn't, it, it could have gone like the much more darkly comedic route of something like A Very Bad Things, uh, but it, it, it doesn't. It chooses deliberately not to. It's, it's a film that implements temperance, you know, and so I, I can't really think of anything bad beyond that. I, I, I mean, maybe some, there's not really anybody that's that underdeveloped of the three, you know, factions of, uh, of the kids, and albeit Tony Collette is a widow, so she is the sister-in-law, as opposed to the proper child, but, I mean, damn, this movie is, it's not just good, it's not just bueno, this film is terrific, it's legit one of the best that I have seen this year. Fayo, Fayo, I guess, would be the fact that they do reveal who killed the patriarch very early in the film, earlier than I was expecting, and and yeah, it's definitely an ugly fashion in which it goes down, as I said. Um, but no, I guess I'm not going to spoil because I, I don't necessarily want to. Maybe I'll do a spoiler review separately. I rarely, if ever, do that, but if there is a demand, and this is definitely the kind of film that dictates some spoilery discussion, um, yeah, I would definitely be be up for it, but the, there there is an ugliness to this family, I guess, and their dysfunctionality and their bickering uh, from everything from politics to money. It's just there is that they are they don't even really seem like they love each other very much, and a family that is in that regard is definitely ugly. Uh, it's man, Daniel Craig has some of the most amusing lines in this, and when they're doing the will reading. He has, uh, like, just as it's about to happen, he's like, it's almost like, uh, oh boy, I'm trying to remember how he puts it specifically. I think he says it's like a, it's like a, uh, a raffle or an auction, you know, put on by a, a public theater group or something. This movie is ugly funny. I mean, where uh, Chris Evans is talking about um, Daniel Craig's investigator character, and he's like, what is this, CSI, KFC? I mean... Ryan Johnson wrote such a terrific script. He directs the hell out of this. This, this is the third film this year that I'm dropping the five out of five Fuego Fireballs for. This is not just a Fuego film. This is an in Fuego film. This joins the very select company that includes Jojo Rabbit and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the aforementioned, as Probably the three best films I've seen this year, along with Wild Rose, which I still can't sing the praises of that enough, but yeah, this is five out of five. Knives Out is one of the most taut, tense, intriguing, just entertaining. One of the best times I've had in a theater in so, so very long, and I almost, I almost saw this even a week before, but I ended up seeing Parasite instead, which will be one of the next reviews that is going to be going up here on Infoyotainment. But I extend a grande gracias to everybody who stopped in and is checking out this early review of Knives Out. The embargo was lifted today, uh, nearly a week before the release of the film, because it comes out on Thanksgiving. Uh, I think, or maybe it's maybe it's the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Anyway, it's still a good number of days that they are showing 
critics and uh, you know early audiences uh, you know this film because the studio uh, Lionsgate if I'm not mistaken is obviously very proud of it and they have something sensational on their hands here I'm I'm gonna see it again in theaters I'm gonna actually fork out money to see it because it's just that great so I have been having in Fuego y'all can find me on all social media sectors like Twitter Instagram Facebook and here on YouTube where I've been doing tons of Star Wars coverage I'm reviewing every episode of the Mandalorian as it comes out on Disney Plus the first two are up already episode three will be dropping tomorrow on Friday because that's when we get each of those new uh, episodes on the Disney Plizzle I've done retro reviews of the prequels Lots of the comics, a few of the new books that came out this year. So definitely check those out along with reviews of films that I've checked out this year, like Jojo Rabbit, like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Wild Rose, Good Boys, one of my most entertainingly raunchy, silly times at the theater this year. I mean, this has been a very entertaining, uh, you know, year of 19 for film, but if you like the spectacular stuff, if for whatever reason you're not here because you've seen me on the horror show where we have over 30,000 strong supporting us over there for all the scarific coverage, definitely if you are unaware, jump over to youtube.com slash the horror show channel where we do at least one episode a day, sometimes two, and every Saturday I do a show called Hail to Stephen King where I talk everything El Rey, Psy King with constant readers and viewers alike. And then lastly, Every Monday evening, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, on the Will Escredia YouTube channel, I do a program called Show Business with the showrunner over there named CP and Lindsay Mimsy from My Two Cents of Nonsense on YouTube, and we talk all things box office from the previous weekend, looking ahead to the upcoming one, and we have some discussion, palaver, if you will, about uh, some of the biggest news stories of the previous week. So, I've been Fuego, y'all have been awesome, and until the real of Ka comes around once more, I shall say hasta luego, sin amigos, but I am hopeful that we get to share more of this film discussion sooner rather than later. Peace! See Knives Out! <laughs>